strike in the West. The strike in the East and strike in the West. That's why Project is the best. That's why Project is the best. We hardly eat and we hardly sleep. We hardly eat and we hardly sleep. Got fucking blisters on our feet. Got Got fucking blisters on our feet. All the sacrifice we make. All the sacrifice we make. Greedy poachers just take and take. Greedy poachers just take and take. The beret, it's uh, it's something I, uh, for the past year and a half now I've uh, I've been looking for a beret, and I thought to myself, okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a mission to get one, even if I have to work for it. And I started the course, and I was like, yes, this, this beret is uh, <laughs> is a lot of work, <laughs> just for that one thing, it's a lot of work. Saving nature's now our call! Saving nature's now our call! If you don't like us, fuck you all! If you don't like us, fuck you all! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Just before we started, uh, Nyala came uh, we were on the middle of the bridge and then Yala came from the front, which is, uh, it's not supposed to be there because it's a fenced off area. It must have been, must have been gone through a fence or something, but just, it had to go through some effort to get on that bridge. It came walking up straight towards us. He wanted to cross the bridge and this guy was pushing it over and... And, uh, and it was amazing when I saw it, I immediately thought like, our course, our training course was the Nyala course. And when I saw that Nyala, I just, Goosebumps everywhere, tears filled my eyes. Like this is a, this is an amazing sign. Like this is a, this is really something that touches you without you even realizing it that much. Yeah, it was cool. It was, uh, it was a pretty magical moment. Yeah, it's that little little push in the back. Like, hey guys, let's go. Let's finish this. You can do it. Don't forsake me. But I might never come home. It, it was strange as well because, like, um, you're going through training and all you want to do is finish. But then, once you know you're only an hour and a half away um, from finishing, you're halfway through your run, you then become a little bit subdued. So it's kind of like, well, yeah, I do want to finish and I'm looking forward to having a beer so much, but then. I've just made some of the best mates I'm ever going to have. Um, are you going to see them again? Yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of points that really tested me. Of do you really want to do this? Are you going to push this through, or what are you going to do? And I had one mindset, and this is going on, going, going, going. Wanted to be with my team, didn't want to stop. And I think in life this is going to be, make me a lot stronger. Like I'm not going to stay with Project, but everything I learned here I'm going to keep with me forever. And I made a new family. And that's something that I'll always carry with me. But uh, just to, to get up in the morning and know you're finished, you don't have that kind of rush of energy or adrenaline. You don't need it anymore. So, so everything kind of aches and pains, but I'm sure in two days it'll be. It'll be fine again, but yeah, it's been very mentally and physically draining. We got to the, like towards the end, everyone was saying they just sort of had nothing left in the tank and it was just running on empty. And I got up that morning, uh, I had my suspicions about today is the day, today is the final day. And I just told myself, whatever they're going to throw at us, they, they're not going to be nice to us, especially in the morning before the run. They're not going to be nice to us, they're going to scream at us again. We're gonna feel like we're in shit again. I mean, you get that feeling, oh, I have to go to the principal's office, that kind of feeling the whole time. And I knew, yeah, that's, uh, that's it, it's happening today. Um, and then Zane, Zane arrived. Um, he was like, trainees, trainees, get into your PT kit. There's been a, a, a rhino down, we've got an orthopsy. He was like, PT kit for an or- autopsy, so like good one. Uh, but nonetheless, so we, we got piled onto the back of the backies, and there was two options. So we were gonna either gonna go to Klosiri Dam, uh, or it was gonna be Olifants. Yeah, but 
Um, we were praying that we were going to go to the um, to the dam, which is a nice flat road. We turned left and went to our left, and so it was like ah. Oh. And as we were driving, I was looking at Zane's taillights in front of us the whole time to see when is he slowing down because this is getting far. And uh, and you're sitting there and it's like brake lights, yes, and these oh, so it's just a bottle. But um, the mood was quite this quite an exciting um, on the back. Everyone knew we had a good idea. That's what we're going to do. And uh, and we got on the bridge. And they told us to get off, and uh, and they tell us, yeah, what, what do you guys think is this? What do you guys think we're gonna do? And Pommy goes, yeah, we have to find a rhino <laughs> because of the because of the lie they told us to get us there, and uh, and everyone just burst out laughing. And it was the run; it was 27 kilometers, and uh, yeah, it was a long way. It was a, a run and a half, definitely. But um... yeah. As I, I said to everyone before we started, I said no, no matter how hard this run gets um, at any stage, just know that in four hours um, everybody is going to be done. It's going to be over. Um, so hopefully that did go through people's head when it was tough. But and Sergeant Calvin is like, guys, you've made it to the to the final run. Congratulations. Now it's time to do the running part. 27k. Set off. I ran um, for the most part with Iggy and um, Iggy and Rotty, um, which was good. We just kept a steady pace. I mean, it is hard. It's a it's a nasty little run, um, you know, up and down. But um, I just had conversations, just about everything. What, what kind of beer we're gonna drink and <laughs> what we're gonna eat. <laughs> it's just a thing of you close your eyes and go. You turn the brain off. You still have conversation on. But you don't think about the legs. The legs are on autopilot and they just go. You just start pushing yourself, start running, ignore the pain, block out everything, happy thoughts as always, so I just keep on saying it to myself, just happy thoughts. And uh, when we ran side by side, you see your brother on your right, your brother on your left, and it just gives you, gives you the extra strength. Yeah, it was just quite an exciting thing, all the time just thinking, you know, we're about to be over, we're about to be over, we're about to be over, so, um, yeah, it, it was hot, tiring, but it was a good thing, and it was a it was a really nice time to really just reflect on the whole course. You know, just just running for three hours, basically. So yeah, just thinking. So that that was quite nice. And, that we had to carry and um, and I feel uh, I feel I let the team down there a bit because I wasn't able to carry my own kit bag uh, because of the back and uh, so I just grabbed my battle jacket and Stretch and Biggie picked up my bag. Yeah you kind of always knew that once you got to the end of that 27k that was it and you'd, you'd be finished and you'd have good food and you could sleep in a bed and you'd have everything would be okay again so so it was it was there was always that to keep you going. You never sort of thought, oh, I'll just walk this bit because, you know, tomorrow I'll be back doing the same thing. It was always just, I'll keep running because if I keep running, I'll get there faster and I can sit down and have a beer and have some meat for the first time in, in a month. And, and so it was, it was that that kept me going at least through, through, the, through the run. But I think if we didn't know that the course was going to be over after the long run, it would have been really demoralizing and difficult to do. But uh, there was always a sort of light at the end of the tunnel and that kept me going through it. And you run and you see the whole bridge and you know, okay, maximum two, three kilometers left, you can start pushing it. But by then your knees are sore, your legs are sore, your feet are sore, back is sore, everything hurts. And uh, you just started pushing and uh, the, the speed slows down. You're still jogging. The only thing that changes is uh, your facial expression. <laughs> The speed stays the same, even if you try to sprint, everything stays the same except the facial expression. So basically you're just running like, going crazy with the pace, but the legs are still doing just normal, just this. You know, so there's, yeah, there's, there's down points to the run as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know, on, on the whole it's good. And then obviously, yeah, we got there. Um, 
had to get, wait for everyone else to come in, which was good. I, I, I wouldn't have wanted to start the, the braai or have a beer or anything like that before everyone was over line anyway. So, so that was good. We helped the, the straddlers in. Um, then had a, a barbie and he got smashed, basically, which didn't take some of the lads very long. Um, or the yank. Um, he was pretty well oiled. But, uh, but no, the, the, fact, the final day was good. Um, it's quite an emotional one. Um, but yeah, it's good. The run, the final run yesterday. You stand in line. That's the last time you get trainees. Get in line. Get information. Get in the get on the field at the back. And you're like, oh, just not again, please. Because everyone told us we, we're not going to be shouted at anymore. <laughs> not that it matters, but you know, you still feel like, oh, again. It's just, oh, you, you stand there and you do, you, do, you do a couple drills and you're standing there because you know you're getting angry, so everything is fucking tucked and you just go, 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 you just, you just do it and you're standing there and you're proud. One, one, two, squat, stand at ease, one. And Sergeant Calvin and uh, Corporal Fisser come walking up to you. And you see the bag, and it's like, yes, this is berets. And he comes walking up to you, puts his uh, uh, right hand on your left shoulder. You put your right hand on his left shoulder, and and uh, take a test to take off our hats that we've been wearing every day for 30 days or 40 days. So, I mean, that was great just to be told that you didn't have to wear that anymore. So we took those off, and then they 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 spoke to each of us about why, or sort of about how they'd seen us change through the course and. How, how we help the team, and, and they just had a few words for everybody, and some more than others, but everyone was spoken to as an individual. And, and you stand facing each other, and he just basically said, you are now a brother, a brother to me, a brother to the guys next to you, and a brother in the project family. You are now part of the family. At that point, he, uh, he, he, starts, he started talking to me, like, I never thought that foreigners would be that strong. I was pushing so hard with my hamstring. And like I, I knew I did it, and then I knew I pushed myself to the absolute limit. But at that point, you're like, fuck, man, yeah, I, I really did it. And I really pushed myself to that point. And you know you did it, but ah, it's just a human thing. When you hear it, you're sure. <laughs> The stuff they said, like to me, definitely it, it, meant, it meant a lot to hear from them. And uh, the sergeant said that when I turned up on the first day, he thought, "Oh, this guy's this guy's going home. This guy's not going to make it through." But then he said that um, just my enthusiasm and and sort of determination got me got me through it. And and that he liked to see it was good for him to see what the English were all about. And that meant a lot just to, to, to come here and have that said. That was that was great. I'd, I'd said quite proudly, I, was, I think I was um, one of the only people um, not to cry at any stage in the, the course. You know, people have cried for various things, whether generally it was just exhaustion. Um, some people were in pain, um, you know, some people got homesick and stuff. So there's, there's tears for various reasons, um, but um, I'd stayed very British and stiff upper lip and just got through it. But then when I actually came to get in the beret, um, Sergeant, I think, yeah, he, he got a tear going um, when he actually gave me the beret because he just had some very kind words um, for me, which, which was a surprise because he's a sergeant's quite a difficult character to judge. And then he hands you your beret, puts it on your head, pushes it down on the side, and, uh, and you, you can't look at yourself. The first thing you want to do is like, I want to look what I look like, I want to see the beret. And in uh, and, and that case, it was just like, I have it on, it's all that matters. Look over the shoulder to this side and this side, it's like, yeah, the guys are looking sharp now. <laughs> the long and the short of what he said to me, um, he just said my like, sarcasm and, and humour and stuff um, 
helped get people through it. He said, um, whether this is the case or not, he said, ask any one of your team. He said, 50% um, of the lads wouldn't have been here um, if it wasn't for you keeping them going. He said, um, you even got myself and Corporal through it uh, on occasions. And then, you know, from there, obviously, he said, um, you know, he didn't think at any stage that I would quit. Um, he knew I'd complete it. And then just, you know, welcome to the Pro Chat family. Um, you know, like a brother, take that ridiculous hat off, put the beret on. Um, I said, yeah, he's, you know, you're a brother now, wherever or whenever you are. Um, then a little hug and he was off. I was like, a bit shell-shocked, to be honest, and thought about that. And like I say, that's a, yeah, probably welled up a bit then. And Corporal was, was following. He uh, added some stuff when he could, but a lot of the time stuff didn't need to be said. And so he, when he got to me, we just shook hands and he gave me a big hug. And, and that was that, like he didn't, didn't need anything else. But And oh, I don't know, I was just proud of him. Corporal Fisher came up, smile on his face, like, yeah, boy, you did it. You fucking did it. I don't know, it's just a lot of emotions that came through me. and um, Yeah, at that point, actually, I started missing some people at home. And I'm like, fuck, I wish they were here. They would have fucking seen me. And, uh, but it was amazing. I'm, I'm so happy that, uh, that I ended up working for mine because Buying one in a shop is not the same. You have to, and it, it, it it's a privilege to uh, to have it on my head right now, and uh, it's a privilege to have earned it, and to have the Protract logo on it, and uh, it just feels awesome. It makes you feel sophisticated, and makes you feel like a proper proper man. <laughs> and to, to have our finally get our berets and be no longer be trainees and just be part of the team, it was it was amazing. Yeah, it's what we've been waiting for for. A month and for it to finally happen and happen just as you thought it would but better it was it was great Fuck, it was uh this is cherry on the whipped cream <laughs> that's what it was i was i was proud i'm a soldier part of the family and yeah they really made that clear i'm yeah i'm really proud of myself and the rest of the guys everybody's standing there and, I was proud, chest up. Like a lot of times, when you're standing in, uh, um, when you're standing in information, where the eyes are hanging in, and, uh, and now everybody was just standing in there, fucking proud. I did this, and I earned it. Yeah, it's really, that was a really special moment. <laughs> It's like, you know, we've stood there in front of all the crosses and for the rhinos we've gone down this year and it's just um, everything hit home, really, why you've done it, why you went through it, really. So it's, uh, yeah, a whole, whole bag of emotions, really. But, yeah, positive but sad. I'm done with being a renegade. All I want from you is immunity. I've seen a world that is so good, so good The only thing that's missing is you Cause I'm a soldier for your love I'm a soldier for your love You're the battle that I've won I fight for your love I die for your love
my soul.